so today is the second day of Invisible Illness Awareness Week and I just wanted to say that I am so proud of all of you guys. You guys have spread awareness through videos, posts everywhere, um, pictures. You guys have done such a great job at spreading awareness and I am so proud of you guys. Second thing I want to say before I get into my next video is I want to take a moment to remember the ones we lost um, since today is September 11th and you know today's a big a big day for our history so I just want to take a moment just to remember those we lost and you know just be thankful for where you are right now okay now that we have that all out of the way we can continue doing the video that I'm about to do for you guys. And I am going to do a video about dating and relationships with an invisible illness. And I know, I know, I'm going there. And um, it's a very touchy subject to talk about because it's so, um, it's probably one of the hardest things to deal with when you are sick. I'm telling you, it's definitely a battle, <laughs> but you have to, you know, find someone who understands what you're going through and will stick with you through it no matter what. So I guess we'll get started then. I'm going to start off by giving some past history of how I used to handle being sick and my symptoms and trying to date and hang out with people when I was younger. So, and then I'll kind of get into how I opened up with my boyfriend who I have now and um, so we'll go from there. Okay. When I was in ninth grade, um, I went on my very first date and we he took me to dinner and then he wanted to take me miniature golfing. And I was not feeling well at all. I mean the whole day, you know, but back then I didn't have as severe symptoms but it was still enough to control, you know, what I was going to do and I wasn't sure if I could eat certain things or what I should be doing to prepare myself. So I didn't eat like all day, which do not do. I'm not telling you to do that. I'm just saying that's what I did. I was 15. I didn't know what to do. I didn't know what's happening with my body, you know. Anyway, he picked me up at like 5 o'clock. We went to Sweet Tomatoes for dinner and I literally like you know, filled my plate up with salad or pizza or whatever they had, and I literally only took like five bites of food, and I was just like, mm, you know, I'm full, <laughs> and he was like, gosh, you know, you eat like a bird, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, you know, I just don't eat very much, I'm, I just get full very easily, you know, because um, I knew, I was like, if I ate too much, I might not feel well, and I'll have to run to the bathroom, and how embarrassing would that be? on a very first date and that would just be really embarrassing for me so I was like alright I just gotta get through this you know so then after we went to dinner we walked across the street if you've ever been to a miniature golfing place when you're you know going through you know all the different holes you're getting farther and farther away from any bathrooms so because there's only one it's on like the very first hole like there's there's only one bathroom, so once you start moving your way through all the different golfing courses, you get farther away from the bathroom, which was a huge fear for me. I remember just not feeling well, and I was lightheaded because I hadn't eaten. It was hot outside, and I didn't feel well at all. So all I wanted to do was just get through it, and that's not a good first date, you know? But that's what I wanted to do, just get through it. And when I got home, it was almost like a relief. Like, oh my gosh, I made it through. Like, I, I almost didn't even care that I even had a good time. It was just try, it was like just a challenge to just try to get myself through that night. And that's just not a good way to live at 15 years old when I went on my first date. Something I should have done, which is something that if you're watching and it's your, you're going on your first date or you're going to hang out with your friends or something, I would suggest, first of all, do, do not skip meals. Eat something earlier in the day, like maybe something that has a little bit more carbs or calories in it so that if you don't eat much at night, then you're not like not doing well. 
And um, even though it's like your first date or whatever and you don't know the person that well, I would suggest that maybe instead of, you know, going somewhere where, there's, where it's outside and there's not many bathrooms, maybe do like dinner because there's restrooms there if you have problems with your GI tract like I do. Um, and then go to like a movie or go back to your house and watch a movie or play board games or, you know, do something where you're comfortable being because you won't have very much fun if you're going to just be thinking about, oh my gosh, I just want to get home, I just want to get through this, I just have to get through this. Instead of thinking of it as like a challenge to get through, you should be enjoying it. And the only way to enjoy it is to make sure that wherever you're going, you are comfortable with where you are at. Now, I'm not saying that you need to tell the person that you're with that you've only known for like two weeks that you have a chronic illness and and you know you have a bunch of issues with your GI tract. Now, I'm not saying get into detail about what's going on. I'm just saying maybe if that person suggests a place to hang out, maybe you suggest something back and say, well, you know, I'd rather be like go to the movies or you know do something inside or you know you don't really have to get much into detail. I mean, I'm not. I'm pretty positive if someone asks you on a date, they're not really going to care where you go. They just want to hang out with you and get to know you. So. You know, you don't have to go into details. And if if they do ask, you know, why don't you want to be outside? Just maybe say, like, you know, you're not really feeling well. And do you just feel more comfortable if you're inside? You don't, and they won't ask any more questions like that. I mean, you know, it's not going to be something they would get into. So if anything, you could just tell them, you're just not feeling well. When you tell someone for the very first time that you are very sick, I would suggest telling them after you've known them for a while or at least that you feel like you can trust them um, because it's something that's obviously a very big thing in your life. I was just waiting like maybe after a couple months or you know it just depends on how long you've known them before and how comfortable you are with them. I would suggest when you bring it up um, maybe just bring it on kind of kind of like it's a light situation like just just say, I have something that I've been struggling with for a while and I'm going to be okay, but it makes me not feel well a lot and I sometimes, you know, can't do certain things and I don't feel well sometimes, but it's something I'm going to get through, but it's def definitely going to be with me my entire life. And then if they start asking more questions and they start asking you things like, oh, well, what is it? Then you can tell them that it's an autoimmune disease and tell them more detailed. I never told anyone about my symptoms or what I went through after I ate or you know the pain I felt. I only told my mom and dad. When I met the boyfriend that I have now, um, we met 2007 or 2008 and we were friends for a very long time. We were friends for about two years before we started dating and he actually has um, lactose intolerance so you know, you know when he would eat something he would eat like a cheeseburger and he wouldn't feel well so after a while he started to realize that you know I wasn't doing well after I ate and he was kind of just like you know he was concerned he was just like are you okay like you know and I would just kind of sit on the couch and just be like well just give me some time like I'll feel better just give me some time um, but I kind of hid it from everyone, but he knew the whole time something wasn't right. I was like, I don't really know what's wrong with me. I've been through a couple tests and stuff, but, you know, I do have something, you know, something in my stomach. Something's wrong. It just hurts all the time, and I'm not really sure. And he was concerned, and he never even thought it was gross or anything. He took me the way I was, and he was just concerned. We ended up dating. And we've been together for about two and a half years, and it's going to be three years in December. And he has been through everything with me. All the ups and downs, all the hospital visits, you know, the Humera incident when, you know, I got drug-induced lupus and rheumatoid arthritis, and he's been through all this stuff with me. And we've had some crazy times. I'm not going to 
sit here and lie and say, oh, it's always perfect, because when you are sick, and if anyone out there is sick and is dating someone or is married, um, I can tell you it's not easy. It's something that you have to kind of compromise and work together and just get an understanding of just the things that you feel and the things that they feel. Um, because it's not going to be like a regular relationship. It's going to be very different, but in the end, it's going to make you so much stronger than anything else. Nothing will tear you apart if you can get through the rough times of being sick. You need to make sure that this person will support you. You know, you want to make sure that if you're not feeling well, they're not like, come on, like, I want to go out and you're homesick. Why are you always sick? I don't get it, blah, blah, blah. No, you need someone who's going to support you, and if you don't feel good, they're going to say, you know what, yeah, let's just watch a movie, and we'll just go out another time when you're feeling better. Make sure that they just understand where you're coming from. It's one of the hardest things to deal with when you're sick. Something that you cannot control is your illnesses. Something you can control is the person that you're with and the people you hang out with when you are not feeling well. You want people around you and you want someone that is going to love you the way you are, sick or healthy, because you can't have someone that's not going to be there for you when you're sick because that's when you need someone the most. They won't always understand the pain you're feeling. No one can understand that. That's just too much for someone to understand. But all that you really need is someone who's going to be there for you and to support you with being sick and going through tests and getting blood work and doing surgeries and just going through all the complications of being sick. You need someone to lean on, basically. I'm not a normal girl. I can't do normal things. I can't go places like most people can. And, but you know, it's something that has made us stronger. And I know whenever we do go places, or we go to dinner, or do something really cool like that, it's definitely way more meaningful than anything else because you really treasure those moments when you go out. And of course you guys are sick, so you guys understand where I'm coming from with that. Even just the littlest thing like, you know, going out for a walk, or having your boyfriend, you know, wheel you around the mall in your wheelchair. And it's just like the little things that make the biggest difference in how you feel in the situation that you're in. Someone is going to stick with you through everything you go through. They're special because it's not just anyone that will, that will stick with you through everything. It definitely takes a special, strong person to get through this stuff with someone. You know, a lot of people just give up, but there's... You have to not give up. You have to keep fighting for what you want. And just like you have to keep fighting to get treatments or to get a diagnosis or to get anything done with being sick, you have to fight for being with someone that you deserve to be with. Someone who's going to treat you like a princess and make you feel good even when you feel bad. And if you've been struggling with keeping someone around, it's not your fault. It's not your fault. I promise. It's just that you're very sick and that person is just not the right person for you in your life. And it just means that there's someone else out there that is going to be there for you always through thick and thin, through healthy and being sick always there will be someone out there for you and you just have to believe and you know just let it all happen the way it's supposed to happen don't try to force anyone to be that person to be supportive because if they're not going to be supportive they're not going to be supportive it's either they get it or they don't and even if they don't understand it if it's a good person that should be in your life they're going to do their best to be there for you always even if they don't understand it. So you just gotta hang in there and just the right person will come around when it's the right time, I promise you. I just wanted to show you guys a picture of me and my boyfriend um, for our two year anniversary back in December. And um, 
because he means a lot to me and you guys are like family so I want to show you guys this is a picture of me and my boyfriend at the beach back in December so all right guys so that was the second video for this week for the invisible illness awareness week and I hope I could help you guys out a little bit and I hope that you guys are all doing well and keep spreading awareness and keep being strong and I will see you guys tomorrow for another video. So, bye guys.